Bioinformatics is a, a science that connects findings from many different uh, areas, mostly informatics and uh, computational biology and uh, genomics, genetics. And uh, uh, as, uh, as in its structure, it uses uh, uh, many different uh, tools. And uh, some of them are specifically developed for, for, uh, for, for managing uh, genomics or biology data. And uh, some of them are uh, tools also used in, in other areas, but uh, uh, very widely accepted in the bioinformatics community. So the, the purpose of this lecture is to, to give a short uh, introduction about these tools, their possibilities, and uh, uh, how, how they can be obtained and for which purposes they can be used. So the lecture will uh, include introduction to Docker, to Git code versioning system, to, uh, to Unix commands uh, with accent of, uh, uh, of its usages in uh, data processing, and uh, finally, the, the LaTeX or Overleaf platform use for uh, uh, writing uh, scientific uh, papers. So let's start with, uh, with the Docker. <clears throat> In its essence, Docker represents a lightweight uh, virtualization, a virtual environment. Uh, uh, it allows uh, uh, for, for the users to, to pack entirely their uh, their system, they, their application into the operating system to install all, all uh, to install all required libraries to uh, to run this, and uh, uh, with uh, with that purpose, they will uh, have independent uh, system uh, which is uh, portable and uh, which can uh, allow also reproducibility uh, of the execution across uh, many different platforms. So uh, as, as I said, so Docker containers, they can, um, they can run on any computer, on PC, Mac, uh, Linux, on, also on any infrastructure, on local machine, on cloud, cloud environment. And uh, uh, in its essence, Docker contains uh, layers. So it's uh, uh, every uh, part of it. So operating system, library, app, uh, that we want to run itself, it it is packed as uh, one layer in uh, in Docker, and uh, also several different uh, Docker images. They can uh, they can share uh, layers by saving saving uh, uh, storage res resources in that way. Uh, one of the the major uh, features uh, of the Docker is. Uh, uh, is it can directly uh, access resources, uh, uh, hardware resources uh, uh, passed directly by the host operating system. So Docker can access uh, uh, graphical card or memory or, uh, or cores uh, without uh, uh, creating a, a significant overhead to, uh, to operating system when running these uh, operations or using this uh, uh, <clears throat> these resources. So how can we create a Docker, a Docker image? So Docker, Docker image, it represents, as I said, packed application together with its environment required for running it. So it includes operating system and all necessary libraries to, to run this tool. So the easiest and uh, preferred way to create a Docker image is through Docker file. Uh, you can see example of it uh, on, the, uh, on the left. It contains uh, a specific syntax with set of uh, commands, not too many of them, six or seven, and uh, uh, with them we can, uh, we can uh, achieve uh, packaging the applications in a, in a way that, uh, uh, that we want. Then with uh, with that file, uh, we uh, we just need to create a, a Docker image with a given command, Docker build command, and we can <clears throat> type the name of the image. And uh, Docker image uh, can be can be run locally, and uh, also it can be uh, pushed to uh, to Docker repository, so the the remote uh, repository, and it can be. Uh, accessed from uh, from over there, from other uh, machines, uh, whether from the cloud or from other local uh, local machines, and downloaded and also uh, executed uh, uh, inside of it, uh, its environment, whatever it it is. 
<clears throat> so her, uh, the Docker file can be created uh, uh, as a common text file by uh, by introducing uh, commands. So I will walk you briefly through some of the potential uh, commands that can be used. So usually the first one is from, and uh, it uh, it represents the operating system, so the base uh, uh, operating system. And uh, this uh, uh, given here, Ubuntu 16.04, uh, it's uh, actually the name uh, of the Docker image that's already created and, and it exists on uh, on so-called Docker Hub repository. So it's a uh, it's a free public uh, uh, repository base uh, where you can register and uh, uh, upload your, your own uh, images. And uh, for example, many uh, many different tools and operating systems they keep track of their versions of their their libraries and operating systems over there. So you can uh, you can with this simple command you can. Uh, put yourself uh, an operating system inside of your Docker. So also you can um, add information about the maintainer of the Docker image. And uh, the most used co Docker command is this run, uh, which uh, follows by uh, the name of the program that will be executed. So for example, here we want to install inside of the Ubuntu Linux operating system, we want to install uh, wget and make tools. We will do that with this command. Then next command is a working directory. So we can position ourselves uh, uh, inside of this Ubuntu operating system into any location that we want. So in slash opt uh, location, we position ourselves. And for example, we download here from GitHub repository for this bioinformatics tool. We unpack it. We position ourselves into this directory perform making, compiling, and then uh, the Docker image is ready. And after it, we can just physically copy this Docker file, which you're looking at into the uh, Docker image. This is a, a very good practice. So uh, one who downloads the, the Docker image can also access uh, this file and see how it was created, what, uh, uh, what it contains. So uh, after writing this Docker file, uh, with docker build command, uh, we can uh, we can create actually the the image, and with docker push command, uh, we can push it to some public repository. So default repository is this Docker Hub, and uh, before performing this push command, we can uh, run docker login uh, with our username, and uh, we have uh, registered the account on Docker Hub. Uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, push image over there and uh, uh, send its address. So this would be the address, for example, of the of the image, and we can send it to anyone. And uh, this person can can use uh, can use uh, our tool. So it's also an excellent practice if you are developing some tool that has a huge number of dependencies, and uh, uh, if you want to uh, to decrease the time. Uh, to save the time to uh, for someone who who wants to to run it or test it, uh, you can just create this Docker image and uh, send him uh, send him the address, push push it to a public repository, send uh, send him the uh, the location of the Docker image, and uh, uh, anyone can uh, pull image locally and just run the tool inside of the Docker. So uh, he he doesn't need to install all the requirements. Uh, and uh, it's very uh, very convenient also for for this uh, uh, for this purpose. So uh, most of this is already mentioned. Docker file is a text file that stores commands to create Docker image. Uh, Docker uses domain specific language to describe how uh, how to to build a, a, an image, and uh, this process of uh, uh, building and including tools is uh, it's automatic after starting this Docker uh, build uh, uh, command. And for every command, as mentioned, uh, the Docker creates one layer. So, for example, if I uh, if I create this uh, Docker image inside of my uh, operating system, and uh, I want to create another one, which also uh, has base image for Ubuntu 16.4. 
uh, it uh, it won't uh, waste time, waste space on uh, storing uh, another copy of uh, Ubuntu, but it will use this layer from the first Docker image and uh, add just the layers that differ. Uh, it's a very, very convenient uh, way and uh, economical use of the, uh, of the resources. Uh, so, uh, yes, most of it is already mentioned and uh, this table it, sh it lists uh, available commands from docker so as mentioned uh, from it initializes a new build uh, stage and uh, defines uh, usually the, the base image containing the operating system a run executes everything that follows uh, after uh, the the ran uh, keyword uh, inside of the operating system that's uh, that is uh, present. So uh, if we put uh, Linux operating system, we can execute Linux commands here, of course, for other operating systems, which are um, not used commonly with, uh, with Docker. Uh, we, can, we would uh, type uh, uh, commands for, for that operating system. system. Uh, then command keyword, uh, it provides the default uh, command which will be executed after running the, the Docker image. So uh, when user runs uh, the image, this command will be executed. Uh, usually that's a bin bash and uh, this, allows, uh, uh, this allows the user to actually uh, connect uh, uh, with the console, uh, bash, in the, bash console in this uh, uh, in this case, directly to uh, to a Docker uh, Docker image, and uh, uh, it it has a, like interactive connection, and it can actually execute uh, uh, commands. So, for example, like when you uh, SSH to to some computer, so you are, uh, actually uh, have access to all the resources of this uh, uh, operating system, and um, also it's uh, it's very useful. For example, if uh, uh, if you need to execute some uh, Linux commands on the, uh, on, on for example Mac or Windows uh, machine, you can just start the Docker image which has a base uh, uh, image Linux, and you can uh, execute uh, uh, some some of the of the commands. Or if you have, for example, uh, if you need to run a tool that only works inside Linux operating system, you don't have uh, you don't have Linux, then you can also uh, put it inside of the uh, Docker and try to, to install it inside of the uh, Docker image. Uh, add and copy are used to actually copying files from the host operating system uh, to Docker image. So it can be some um, libraries, it can be source code, it can be some some data. Usually it's not good practice to put uh, a large amounts of, uh, of data into the Docker image. Maybe some examples, something that uh, uh, that's convenient for for users to 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 help them in understanding what's present in the Docker image. But uh, I'm telling this because we should pay attention to the size of the Docker images. So uh, we should only put uh, inside of it uh, uh, what is uh, actually uh, required for for this um, tool that's being Dockerized, or so not to to put um, uh, everything that we would uh, uh, ever need uh, inside one Docker. Uh, image and then use it for for every tool. So it's better practice, especially because of this layered structure of the Docker's, to uh, to have uh, multiple, of course, Docker images and for for every uh, for every tool to create uh, its own uh, Docker image. And uh, finally, the last command given here is a work dir uh, work working directory. So it's used to set default working directory for the uh, for the container. So it's the location where a uh, user will be uh, put uh, after uh, logging to Docker image or where uh, some com where, where commands uh, uh, will be uh, will be executed. <clears throat> uh, we already went through some uh, potential uh, commands uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for for Docker. As you can see here, it's uh, also very similar. So base operating system is Ubuntu latest version. So we 
uh, we run up to get uh, a tool inside of the Ubuntu that's used for installing new programs such as wget uh, python uh, we we can install additional python libraries uh, uh, we can uh, also position ourselves in desired location in in by some unwritten practice usually tools are uh, new tools are in, uh, installed in this uh, slash or opt uh, location so we can uh, uh, w get them uh, we can uh, un untar them and uh, we can remove the archive to to lower the the space uh, in, in the in the docker and uh, we can also add some environment variables and copy docker file uh, at at the end usually as a as a good practice so uh do do you have some questions maybe about docker or at the end we can we can go through for all of the uh through all of the questions git versioning system so uh it was created by uh, the founder of the uh, of the linux linus torvalds and uh, he uh, uh, recognized the need for for having a well structured and uh, easily maintained uh, tool for uh, code versioning because as uh, the the linux community was uh, linux kernel community was uh, growing uh, there were many contributors and it was uh, very hard for him to uh, to decide which changes will be incorporated inside of the main uh, main code for for kernel which not which modifications should be made and uh, at some point uh, uh, it was uh, too much for for him then uh, he just said okay now we will we will stop any development and uh, we will create a, a versioning system uh, which will be used to uh, to maintain the, the code upgraded and add uh, modifications so and uh, during that time uh, he actually uh, created all the concepts and implemented the the, the application for uh, for versioning uh, linus is uh, one of the uh, one of the people who is uh, probably the most uh, 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 he, he has a very high influence in modern computer science and uh, technology but uh, he's not someone who is uh, uh, who is present on the medias or influential and uh, he sees himself uh, as uh, as he described uh, as, as a git uh, cranky old man uh, and uh, he he prefers uh, having his quiet job on small on small office and maintaining and doing this very very super important uh, things uh, and uh, we should probably uh, all of us should be very thankful for to him to to doing all of these uh, amazing things so uh, on this link you can find the instructions on how to uh, install the uh, git uh, locally and uh, we'll i'll try to to walk you uh, briefly at least uh, through creation of uh, and using of some uh, git uh, repository so in its essence uh, it is uh, uh, consisted of uh, uh, of nodes and, and branches so uh, you have for example some version of the code and um, you can uh, uh, you can push it to to some remote repository or, or, or local repository and uh, after that if you make some changes then you uh, create this second version and uh, these versions are usually called patches and uh, also it is possible for uh, multiple people to uh, to contribute to this and uh, uh, when someone is uh, wants to make some changes uh, he usually creates this branch uh, on uh, on which it uh, uh, on, on which he uh, builds uh, or adds his own modifications and after that merge it uh, with the uh, with the main code so uh, i will now create one uh, example repository on, on on github uh, and uh, i will try to uh, to clone it uh, locally uh, github
so I can uh, create new repository for repository. Uh, create an organization. My repositories. Uh, Here. New repository, okay. <laughs> so I can name it uh, test. Uh, it can be public, okay. Uh, I can, it can have some readme file, okay. Create repository. So here it is. Uh, it contains this uh, readme.md uh, file, which can be uh, added uh, also online. And uh, it contains the markdown, uh, markdown text, so you can use some tags to uh, to structure it uh, better. And uh, the main thing that uh, we want to do here is actually uh, to take take the address uh, to clone it. So uh, here we can uh, we can take this local uh, address. And uh, we can uh, we can do git clone. Okay, git clone, and okay, it's it's a smart uh, it's a smart uh, uh, console. So it uh, no, not that. We want to take for for Clever, Clever, yes. Okay, so I'm cloning into into test and if I <clears throat> lock it lock it myself. So here uh, we have this uh, readme file, same as in the uh, uh, on the on the GitHub. So now what we can do, we can create some some new file, for example, uh, win test dot uh, dot pi. <clears throat> And we can uh, we can print uh, hello world, and we can uh, save it and quit. And now we have uh, we have created new file. Let's add it to uh, to a repo. So uh, here uh, currently we are uh, we are working on this uh, main branch, and we can see that by git branch. Uh, and uh, since I'm I'm the only developer, I can uh, uh, I can use this uh, uh, this main branch. Um, I don't have to, for example, create the new one. So I can uh, add. Uh, this file to to git to be it's called staged so i can uh, git add test dot uh, dot pi and now if i check uh, the status with git status i can see there is a uh, there is a new file test dot pi which is added to git but still we haven't created the commit the patch so we can do that by git commit and uh, assign the message with the initial commit. Okay. And now if we check the, the status, we said it says nothing uh, to commit. Uh, we have uh, we have this uh, this commit. It's called initial commit, the, what, the name that uh, we gave him. And uh, we can, if we are done with our changes, for example, we can push it to, to repository. Also, it's a good practice uh, to uh, to push it if something happens uh, on our local machine, it uh, the code will be backup. So it's a good practice after every 10, 15, 20 minutes, an hour to create uh, like a baseline one commit and uh, just to, to save your file, you will feel better, you will feel safe. <laughs>
So you can uh, push current uh, commit with uh, git push and then keyword origin and then you type the name of the branch on the remote repository. So uh, this command says I'm pushing current local uh, branch on which I'm sitting, it's called main, to a remote branch on the, on the cloud repository, on GitHub repository, uh, and the name of that branch is also main. It used to be called master, but uh, a year ago they uh, switched to main because of the uh, history of uh, using these words in a bad purposes, slavery, and so unfortunately for all of us who, who got used to using a master, we had to switch to, to main. And it was also, I suppose, a good commercial because many people are talking about it. So when I uh, add git push origin main, uh, let's see what happened on our repository. So if I refresh it and uh, our file is there with this print uh, keyword. So then I can uh, I can continue developing it. I can uh, continue modifying it, um, add some uh, add some changes. Uh, for example, I can print it twice, save it. Uh, now if I check status. It says it's it's modify, uh, and uh, let me uh, purposely create some something that uh, uh, I hate when it happens. Uh, I will make uh, modifications uh, in the remote repository, so I will modify this uh, this readme. Uh, this is a title. So, and I can actually create commit from here. So uh, I can commit the changes. Optionally, I can type the name, but I can just commit changes. And now, uh, now this, uh, uh, this remote repository, it went from my local copy, it went one commit ahead. And uh, now what will happen if I create, uh, for example, uh, if I create uh, a patch for this, git add and git commit, I will put here second, second commit. Now I created a patch, uh, which is actually here. So this one, it doesn't doesn't exist. So I'm here. And uh, now I want to uh, push this to master, uh, to main branch on the remote repository, and it should go here. But uh, I don't actually have these changes, which are made on the remote repository. So now when I try to do git push, it will tell me uh, that uh, I'm not synced with the uh, with the latest what's available on the remote repository, and uh, I should do that before uh, performing the push. So it is actually what should happen. Uh, this uh, uh, process, this this way of functioning, it actually uh, 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 it saves us uh, from uh, <clears throat> save us from. Um, ignoring some of the important, uh, potentially important commits made by others. And uh, the point is that uh, we all have in any, uh, uh, in any time we have this main, uh, main branch, main version of the code. And uh, when we want to, to add changes, we should uh, all uh, add them directly to this latest currently uh, current version of the uh, of the code. So this remote repository it's centralized and it it contains the main version of the code. And all of the users we can pull the code locally, work on it, and then uh, when work is done we can sync with the uh, with the with the main. So what should we do here? Uh, now we are uh, currently on as I uh, as I uh, get. Uh, as I said, we are sitting on this main branch, and uh, in order to uh, in order to make the push, uh, we have to pull uh, what's 
the change from the remote repository and uh, we can do that by uh, we can do that by uh, uh, switching to uh, to a new branch so we can uh, we can uh, create uh, git git checkout to new branch called uh, uh, old for example checkout And now, uh, when we are on this old branch, oh, so so. Uh, before that, sorry. Uh, so uh, we have to see. Uh, the previous commits and the return to to the previous uh, previous patch that we were working on, and we can uh, do uh, that by. Sorry, Vladimir. Yeah. Maybe this is a good uh, place to show Git different to compare two branches. How you compare? Uh, uh, Git diff between. Okay. Two yes. Branches. Yes, but for that uh, I also need this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, to pull, to pull the. Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so here uh, I I see that uh, there is uh, this commit, and uh, with that I can uh, uh, I can switch to uh, to new new branch with this previous. Uh, commit uh, before creating so i want to uh, i'm currently positioned here and i want to position myself here then to pull what's on the master and then to merge these two so uh in order to do that i need to see uh what is the commit id of this patch and i do that with the git log and uh now i can uh, I can do git checkout uh, minus b. Uh, okay, this old branch I don't need it. I will remove it later. I will call it uh, uh, previous prev, and uh, here I will put this commit id. Okay, now I'm on am at previous, and uh, now I can pull the changes from the uh, from the master because uh, from here I can receive this patch which is present on the master so mm -hmm. now I'm doing sorry may I interrupt you please just, just to see if I understand everything well so if for instance the three of us are working on the same project we download it and work locally on it and we make our changes when we want to turn it back to the, the main repository we can't do it because we have some differences and until we uh, undo all our changes we cannot continue working with uh, with main branch yes yes but is there a, are you showing us how to to compare our version of code with the original version of code and uh, is it possible to merge those two yes yes yeah, exactly. exactly that's that, that's exactly what uh, we're going to do now so now i'm yes, pulling with, the latest with thing. one yes with one slight correction so it's not uh, that he undo the changes he just no, goes no. step back, all changes exist, but in two exactly. branches. So it's not undo. Yes, just that. So somehow some changes are recognized and merged. To... Yes. yes. So now I'm pulling on this previous branch, I'm, I'm pulling uh, the latest code from uh, from master, git pull origin main. Now I can uh, I can do that. And it notifies me about the, the changes and I can modify if I want the, the commit message. And now uh, this previous branch, it contains the, the freshest master. So now, now I can uh, git uh, uh, checkout uh, main, where I have the latest version of the code. 
and I can do rebase. This is uh, what, what is merging. So since I modified one file and uh, remotely I see another file is modified, it shouldn't be a problem with the, with the merging. So I can just call git re, uh, rebase previous. And now I can do git push origin main. And it went. So okay, here it question. is. Because if three different persons are working at the same time with the same problem, <clears throat> and uh, if all three persons are trying to 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 uh, update, the you original, cannot do it in the same moment. No, 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 it's okay. impossible. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, uh, it's a, uh, uh, there is a queue on the server, so one message, uh, one commit request will. Uh, yeah, we, we will come before the others. So that's that's, okay. so that's the point of having exactly. So okay. that's the point of having centralized, uh, centralized system. So uh, I, I hope this was useful. And uh, let me remind you, it is uh, uh, what happens when you create a, a patch uh, before checking the master. So what I should have done is to first, uh, before creating the patch, first uh, doing uh, uh, first do git pull origin master then when i'm on the um, main yes what i told you and then when i'm on the latest up to date then i create the patch and try to push it of course uh, it, it will take 10 seconds it's possible that someone uh yeah but it's a very low possibility that someone in, within these 10 seconds would actually do the the push so uh hope that was uh, that was useful we will uh the, there are many many tutorials about git here are some some links and instructions on how to uh how to uh, to install it you will have it all uh, all available and just to to summarize what uh, uh i i already uh, I already said. So on the right side, you can see this is a like a central uh, server, and uh, on, uh, on users' computers, we check out the code, we work on it, and then uh, when we are happy with our changes, we we can try to first uh, update ourselves with the latest version of the main, and then try to to push our, our changes to uh, to the official copy. Usually, this process. Uh, um, so actually merging uh, some patch to, to master, it's usually uh, on, on larger systems, uh, it's, uh, it's consisted of several steps that include code review. So uh, every repository might have uh, uh, reviewers and approvers. So uh, it is, for example, good practice that every patch, every modification needs to be approved by two reviewers or one and then uh, there is a person with privileges that can actually do merging after a patch obtained these two approvers so it's also very safe safe way to maintain fully functional code 24 7. so this is the the process that uh, we we went through no need to uh, to repeat it this is a basic git flow so First, we do git add, and from unt untracked files, it becomes uh, uh, it becomes uh, uh, modified. Then, with the git commit, it's actually uh, staged inside of this patch, and with git push, we actually push it to to a remote uh, repository. Uh, also, when you install uh, git on on your computer, you usually need to uh, run this uh, <clears throat> these two commands to set username in the email for the uh, for the past uh, for the um, in order to access and to make uh, pushes on the on the remote uh, repository uh, this is the list of uh, commonly used commands uh, let me just go briefly through it so with git clone uh, you can actually uh, clone the repository. It's, it's the first command that we perform. We git add and commit add adds file and the uh, commit creates uh, the the patch like a group of files that will be pushed uh, together uh, to the uh, remote repository. A git status give uh, the status of the 
current uh, Git repository. Uh, Git diffs shows the differences. Uh, so what is staged and what is uh, uh, modified? Uh, let's uh, uh, let's try try to see. For example, if we do uh, Git uh, diff, uh, haven't used it for a long time. Let's see Git diff prev. Uh, so show me the differences between uh, my branch and Maybe. what's present on the prev. Uh, and no differences. Uh, it should show some differences. Uh, let's see. Main and prev. Is ah, main prev. Okay. Like this? No. No. Old. Ah, okay. Okay. So uh, th there are no differences with, within this, but uh, uh, with the uh, uh, git uh, uh, diff all, all you can see yes uh, we can see this uh, which was yes, added yes, yes. To, to readme files so uh, the red and the minus sign it shows the lines that were removed and the plus and the green uh, the line that is uh, added instead of uh, uh, instead of it so it's very uh, very useful and uh, also it is a good practice before uh, pushing uh, a commit to, to master to do this git diff to actually review uh, which changes uh, have been done to uh, to the files so uh, it is a, it is a good practice uh, to uh, to have uh, each patch for one thing so don't create uh, huge patches that uh, uh, that include many things but uh, it is better to uh, better to split them into several uh, logical uh, like sub uh, sub patches or sub units and uh, also uh, git is a preferred way of sharing the the code so try uh, as much as you can not to send the source code via emails or zip archives or any other uh, chats uh, so uh it it won't take more more than 15 seconds just to to push it to some git uh repository or location and just uh, share the the address of the git uh git repo repository uh also uh please pay attention to the size of the git repository sometimes uh, people tend to push data uh, together with the uh, with the code to git repository and it then it takes forever to clone the repository and uh, uh, it's not uh, not very convenient it is okay to put put some test uh, data small size let's say smaller than one one megabyte uh, uh, to perform some tests or to uh, present uh, what code does to, to the users with some examples in a in a better way but uh, larger than that uh, if possible it should be avoided and uh, if some data is necessary to run the uh, the code uh, then the instructions for downloading this uh, this data could be uh, could be provided but um, i totally understand sometimes we are we're just uh, lazy and it's more uh, it's easier to to push the, the data together with uh, with source code uh, you already saw the github and how it uh, uh, how it functions so it's uh, uh, public uh, uh, rep repository and the platform for creating, managing uh, uh, Git repositories and projects. It was acquired by Microsoft a couple of years uh, ago. And uh, this, since then it uh, mostly improved. So they, they kept the same, uh, they kept the same concept. They, they even allowed creating of um, uh, private repositories uh, for free. So the repositories, if you have some code that shouldn't be shared by everyone, you can, uh, you can, uh, make that uh, uh, that setting uh, and uh, that's that's uh, pretty much it this is a process of creating the, the repository so here you can you can select whether it is public or uh, private and uh, it is also good practice to include some short biography about you in, in the repository because it's kind of your uh, representation and uh, someone can can use it to not only to access the code, but maybe to uh, judge about your programming experience. 
Any question about Git? Okay, so now the, the larger topic. I would try not to go too much into, into details. Uh, I, I just want to, to walk you through all, well, not all available, but uh, some, some of the commands that we recognized as, uh, uh, as useful for, uh, for us and to show you the possibilities, what can be achieved with one or two simple uh, commands that can save a, a lot of time. And uh, also uh, searching online is a, is a good reference. So uh, when you want to perform some operation with the commands, commands that uh, will be presented, you, can, uh, you don't have to recognize or memorize the, the name of all the arguments and commands you can uh, you can look for for them and of course if it wakes if you are not using them uh, on everyday basis so uh, many uh, simple and maybe even some complex uh, operations or functions in bioinformatics can be achieved using this uh, uh, available unix or linux uh, uh, commands and uh, also the majority of bioinformatics software is written for, for, uh, uh, for Unix. And uh, inside of the terminal, inside of the console, we can, uh, we can access this, uh, these commands. One of the advantages uh, is that it's usually uh, much faster than some operations that we can write in a, in a Python. So if it is a simple operation, then it's uh, probably a good practice to, to try with the uh, uh, to try with the command line tools instead of the, the Python. Uh, so here is the list of some basic Unix uh, commands. So let's go briefly through, uh, through, through them. So ls, one of the most commonly used, it lists the contents of the current directory. It's same as dir on, on Windows make directory it creates new directory move and copy commands they use for moving and copying the uh, the files and rm for removing uh, cat it prints the or concatenates files so it prints the content of the uh, of the file but it also can be used for concatenating uh, two or more files <clears throat> uh, less it displays the contents of the file one page at a time and the head and the tail, they show the first few lines or last few lines of the file. Change directory, it, uh, as it says, so it makes you uh, change current working uh, directory to position yourself uh, on the desired location in the operating system. Uh, PWD it prints working directory. Find is used for finding uh, files with, that match, which name matches some. Uh, expression uh, grab it searches for a, a pattern inside of the file uh, wc it counts the lines or words in the file and history it displays the previously executed commands in the uh, in the console also uh, many unix distribu distributions contain man commands so you can uh, see the manual for the uh, for the command by typing for example man cat it will show you the help for this cat all possible parameters that could be used for it so uh, be, uh, beside mentioned that there are also some let's say a bit more uh, complex commands used for some specific uh, purposes such as cut it as it name says it cuts for the file uh, cut some sections from each line of the file in desired way uh, so it can uh, cut parts of a line as a bytes, as characters, or as a fields. And uh, for example, it's used for, for slicing columns from uh, tab separated values file or comma separated values file. So here are some examples how it uh, works. So cut minus uh, minus C. It uh, uh, it creates. Uh, uh, it it, cut, it extracts uh, character three, six, and eight uh, uh, from uh, from each line. Uh, so cut minus minus c it uh, significates the uh, the character, and uh, after it follows the the name of the of the file. 
uh, and uh, we can also uh, extract columns. Uh, so we'd cut minus F, F for field. So it cuts from field two to field four. So four, it extracts columns two, three, and four from the file and tab is the default delimiter. If we want to change delimiter, we can do it by adding this minus D, minus D, and uh, change from tab to uh, to comma. So here we have comma separated values file, and with this command we can extract uh, columns one, two, and three uh, from a file. So if we only uh, add here one number, it represents uh, from column one to this column. Advanced file walk is uh, a, a, one of the, let's say, complex uh, uh, commands. It's, it's not just a command, it's kind of a text uh, editor, uh, which can perform very advanced uh, operations on the, uh, on the text. So in it performs by walking a line by line through the text and performing uh, uh, desired uh, uh, operations. So, as I said, it refers to a program, AWK or AUK, OAK, and um, uh, also it, it is the name of, um, uh, of, uh, of command. So, here is the example, uh, OAK uh, minus F and uh, print. Dollar uh, one. It dollar uh, one uh, represents the first uh, word in the uh, in the line uh, from this file. So it's basically the same as cut minus f. So uh, it, it cuts uh, first uh, column uh, where uh, double dots represent the separator for the uh, for the file <clears throat> by default. Uh, also here we can uh, uh, we can replace uh, second uh, second word uh, which is Tom with Adam. So this uh, this command will uh, print in the file containing hello Tom. It will actually print hello Adam. And uh, uh, dollar zero it prints the entire line. So we change second uh, word. Uh, to Adam and uh, then we get hello Adam. Uh, also we can uh, add uh, some uh, operations at the beginning or at the end of the uh, file processing uh, operation with this uh, begin and uh, end uh, section. So uh, this would actually print contents of the file and end sentence to the start and to the end of the contents of the file. So this prints zero, it prints uh, in the entire line, and since uh, oak uh, goes uh, through all the lines, it will print uh, entire content of the file, but it will just add the file contents before the content and file footer at the end. Uh, also, we can define separators uh, uh, for the uh, input file, and also we can define separator for the output file. So if we want to format uh, the output, or we, if we want to change the separator, we can use this uh, uh, this command. Uh, also, we can uh, create some conditions, and we can print, for example, only the lines uh, that uh, have in the first column value larger than thirty, or some more complex uh, operation. We can, uh, if uh, the content is uh, of the first column in the in the line. If it is larger than 30, then we can multiply it by three and print it. And if it's not, we can perform some other operation. Also, OAK uh, supports some mathematical functions. So as I told you, it's a, uh, a bit more uh, complex than just a, a simple a Unix command. A sad or a stream text editor, it's used for modifying the, the input, uh, usually specified as a text by a list of commands. So a single command may be specified as a first argument to, uh, to sad. Here is the, here is the example. Uh, so if we, uh, if we echo this, uh, uh, this string, A-T-A-T-T-T-A, and pass it to sad command, 
So this first S, it signifies search, search for TA and replace it with CG in the input provided. So it will replace the, uh, every TA with the, uh, with the uh, it will replace, sorry, the first uh, TA in the line uh, with, uh, 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 with CG. If we want to uh, perform more replacements, we can add, for example, replace two occurrences of this, uh, of this word test with uh, another test. And uh, uh, also we can uh, do searching. Uh, uh, yes, Milos. Oh, yes, uh, you use a pipeline in the first command. You yes. Made Milos. Yes, in the next slide I, I will. I, I, do ah, it okay, on, okay, I did okay. it on purpose, yes. I, I, I will okay, explain. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can print the, the entire line. Uh, of, which uh, contains this uh, uh, search text, uh, in this case test, replace it with the uh, syntagma another test and then print the modified uh, line and we, with the minus n, we can print only modified lines. Uh, we can also select which uh, on which lines to perform search, for example, only line two and three of the file or uh, if we want to skip the first line with the replacement, we can, define it here from line two till the end of the file. Usually dollar signed in the Unix commands is significant till the end. So dollar is it's kind of the end. Uh, also, we can use set to delete, uh, for example, the second line in the text or from third line till, till the end. So this would keep only first two lines of the, uh, of the file. Uh, and uh, also it can be used to, to replace characters inside of the uh, inside of the file. Grep, uh, probably one, one of the mostly used tools for uh, Unix commands uh, for <laughs> at least from bioinformaticians. So it searches for pattern inside of the uh, inside of the file, the, the syntagma is very simple. So we provide two arguments. First is a pattern and second is a path to a file. Uh, here are some examples. So with this kappa signed, we can, uh, we can demand that uh, uh, this pattern uh, is present at the beginning of the, uh, of the line. So uh, this command will find all occurrences of uh, PP at the beginning uh, of the uh, of the line uh, we can also uh, let's say uh, do the opposite uh, grapping so we can uh, look for lines that uh, doesn't contain this foo or uh, bar so minus v uh, it uh, negates the the condition <clears throat> uh, we can also extract the line uh, before uh, the pattern that that was found found and also the line after if we want to uh, to to do that so uh, by adding this minus b and minus a uh, parameters to uh, to a grab command uh, we can make it uh, uh, case insensitive and uh, also uh, we can uh, search for a word meaning that uh, <clears throat> this uh, is uh, should be uh, should be inside of the um, should have spaces before and, and after it white signs some some more examples so grep uh, minus uh, r searching in all files recursively uh, we can also invert the search uh, as mentioned uh, we can only do counting on how many lines matches the given pattern. So not uh, actually showing the lines, but just counting them. Or we can show the line number uh, while displaying the, the output and um, also some, uh, some more advanced. So here uh, we can look for appearance uh, of any of these two patterns using this OR operator. So uh, if uh, pattern one or pattern two appears in, in the uh, uh, appear in the file, we can uh, it will be included in the output. 
and uh, uh, how, how can we do end so there is no end operator with the uh, with the grab uh, but uh, we can uh, we can do it like this using this joker sign star <clears throat> it uh, uh, it means uh, uh, any character so we look for uh, uh, presence of dev string and then uh, anything else then tech so uh, the sentence must contain dev and tech how can we uh, do how can we grab for dev or tech but not pm Milos, do you have maybe some? Yeah. Yes, so we can do minus capital E, uh, dev uh, this or sign tech, and then minus V PM. You mean to pipe it? Uh, no, uh, you just write one after another, I think. Uh -huh. or, or you mean if uh, dev and does not, okay, you can pipe it also, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, okay, uh, you, you you try it and then you can um, you can maybe yeah. type it in the meeting meeting notes. And thanks. Yes. For okay. The suggestion. So yeah, the the reason why um, uh, why I gave this example, it's a good introduction for for using uh, uh, Unix, yes, uh, Unix yes. pipes. So uh, what is uh, the concept of piping? It's a very simple operation that uh, passes the the standard output of one command to standard input uh, of the other command. It's very useful for fast file manipulation because it uh, uh, it saves uh, uh, writing and reading on the hard drive. So everything is performed on the operating uh, memory. And uh, usually it's, sometimes it's even used for communication between different bioinformatic uh, tools. Uh, just to uh, to perform some operations faster. So here is uh, how, how we can use uh, piping to uh, perform the, the given task on the previous slide. So if we, uh, this uh, grab minus E, dev or tech will uh, print uh, all the lines if, uh, if they contain uh, whether dev or, or tech. And then uh, we can, uh, pass all of these lines to another grep command and uh, just uh, include those that don't have PM uh, uh, PM string. So this is how it can be uh, how it can be done. Uh, another example of uh, piping so we can uh, cut the the content of this this file. Uh, we can extract only uh, only three lines with the head command, and uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, cut minus d, so set the delimiter uh, to uh, to space and extract this first column uh, of the uh, of the file uh, into this uh, into this new list. Uh, dot txt so this is another form of piping we will uh, see that on the uh, on the next slide but this is the way uh, we can uh, save the the result of the uh, of the command also another example of uh, very commonly used piping is with uh, ls so we can uh, list uh, uh, all files in the current uh, current uh, directory and uh, only uh, grab uh, a line starting with D that signifies directories. Uh, there is probably parameter for ls to list only directories, but uh, it's another way of doing it. Uh, we can list all the processes containing uh, a string Jupyter in the name. So with ps command, it prints uh, all the, the processes currently running on the uh, operating system. Uh, we can also count the number of uh, processes in the operating system by 
uh, passing this uh, output of uh, ps.aux uh, command uh, to word count command and minus l it will uh, not count words but lines l is for lines we can also sort the file and remove duplicate uh, lines so the sort command will alphabetically sort the lines in the record.txt and the unique uh, will remove duplicated uh, lines and uh, uh, we can also use pipes to read a particular entry from the user and store it in a uh, in a file Uh, another, uh, uh, let's say, uh, another piping command is used with uh, uh, with low, with uh, greater and greater greater signs. Uh, it uh, significates uh, uh, writing the content, uh, the output of the command to uh, to some file. So with uh, only one sign, it writes to a file, and uh, with the uh, with the two, it uh, pens. Uh, can you tell me the differences between writing and appending? If you want to write, then you will write the, the blank document. If you want to append, you will add it at the end. Mm -hmm. So if uh, uh, if write is used and the the file already exists, it will be no. it will be all right. Yes. Uh, also, uh, there is a, there is a way to uh, chain commands. So to actually execute the more than one commands in in one line, in the uh, let's say same uh, same environment, and uh, uh, there are several ways of uh, performing this chaining. Uh, mostly used are uh, uh, with end end or 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 uh, operator. And uh, also, it is um, it is useful for, for example, for uh, uh, merging uh, commands uh, in the same layer in the Docker container. If we want to, uh, if we want to do that, so for example, uh, we can uh, uh, perform uh, untarring of the reference files and running some bioinformatics tool and pipe uh, pipe the result to output uh, file. Just one question. You said that every Unix will return a file. It, it, will, it will it save it? Uh, uh, not so so by by default, uh, the output uh, of the of the command will be sent to to your console to to the okay. standard output, and you will see it. But uh, after you see it, it uh, it's not saved anywhere. You cannot access it uh, anymore. Mm -hmm. So if you want to to have it permanently saved, then you pipe it. Uh, with a greater sign to uh, to some uh, to some file, and the difference is uh, uh, between <clears throat> uh, end end and or or commands uh, is uh, ab about how the return va value of the execution of this uh, of these tools is treated. So every command it has uh, its uh, return value, and by some unwritten convention in at least in, in Unix. If this return value is zero, it significates that uh, everything is uh, uh, everything is uh, okay. If some error happens, usually tools should should be written to to return some uh, error code uh, different from from zero. So uh, uh, the the differences between uh, end end and uh, or or chaining uh, commands is uh, how. Uh, the return value of this chain of commands uh, will be uh, will be created. So if uh, if for example uh, end is uh, is used to chain the commands, then uh, in order to return successful uh, code zero, uh, it is required that all uh, commands in the chain return uh, return zero. So it's it's usually much safer to uh, to use this end end uh, chaining and also the third is just just chaining with the uh, uh, with dot uh, with, with semicolon and uh, uh, with that uh, uh, the return value of the last command will be 
and return to the operating system. So for example, if first command in a chain, if it created some error, and uh, if it was followed by some other command which didn't have an error, then operating system uh, would get information that this chain of commands successfully finished, even though the, there is some hidden error, which is usually a dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. So here are some uh, examples. So how to concatenate two tables with the same columns. Uh, we can do it in many different ways. Here is one way. So we can, if we have this table one and the table two, uh, and we want to create table containing same uh, column uh, names, and, but uh, we don't want to uh, uh, to repeat the header of the uh, the header of the file. So we can do it uh, like this. So we can uh, we can copy the contents of the table one to table, and then. Uh, uh, then uh, remove the first line for the from the table two and just append it to this table. .tsv. So just append the, the contents since uh, uh, in both files the columns match one hundred percentage. A few words about the the consoles. One of the mostly used uh, shells in Unix operating systems. Uh, is a bash born again shell it's a powerful command uh, not, not only a shell but it's uh, it's programming language uh, which can be used uh, uh, which contains of course the interpreter and uh, uh, can uh, host uh, many different uh, unix commands execute them one after the the other or parallelize them or um, it can uh, perform many many complex information and uh, also some some for example bioinformatics pipelines and are, are written uh, written uh, well at least those simpler ones they can be written in, in the uh, using bash uh, bash scripting uh, so it uh, its syntax uh, is uh, well I, I cannot say it's similar to any programming language maybe maybe to see a bit, but uh, it doesn't have, for example, type declarations. <clears throat> it supports, uh, uh, explicit. it doesn't have explicit type declarations, but it supports dealing with numbers, strings, uh, arrays. It contains arithmetic operations, if case statements, loops. Uh, it can also create uh, functions. And uh, here is the link to, uh, to a tutorial about bash scripting. If you need it, you can go through it and uh, what was briefly mentioned, the, the processes. So every uh, every op operation or a program on Unix operating system, it's called a process. And uh, uh, we can uh, check which processes are currently uh, running. Uh, we Every process have uh, assigned process ID by the operating system. And uh, we can use this uh, process ID to access the process. And if it's told, we can, we can use it to potentially kill the process and uh, uh, free the memory from uh, from it. And uh, also, the process can run in a uh, in a background or in a uh, or, or in a foreground. Uh, here is the the list of some uh, useful commands for process management: to send it to background, to foreground, to list the processes, to get the ID. Uh, we don't have to go into details. Uh, Vim editor, it's uh, interactive, ultra fast, uh, keyboard only text uh, manipulation, very, very convenient way if you know how it functions and it won't take you more than 30 minutes to, to learn basic uh, uh, commands and it will save a lot of, uh, a, a lot of time, a lot of things you can write to uh, much faster than in a, in a regular text uh, editor. So it has uh, three different modes, insert command and visual mode, and uh, you can switch between uh, these, uh, uh, these three and there are many, many tutorials. So I encourage you to, uh, to go and to, to investigate more about the capabilities of Vim editor. <clears throat> These are some uh, resources used for creating these slides. You can 
uh, you can have a look. And uh, we are coming to our last uh, section of today's talk, uh, which is LaTeX or Overleaf uh, online platform for uh, that runs basically LaTeX. Uh, I on these slides I uh, just wanted to to show that uh, for uh, majority of the of the journals nowadays they they offer. Uh, template for for their papers which can be downloaded and uh, uh, which can be uh, added to to this overleaf platform after, after which you can uh, actually do uh, writing of the uh, of the paper in very convenient and very controlled way without performing some uh, very redundant operations so uh, let me briefly open one of the overleaf papers uh, I've been previously been working on. <clears throat> Let me log in. I suppose I actually went with Google. Uh, I don't have, I should have, okay. Yes. Okay, so here uh, here is the Overleaf platform and it's completely free. You can do anything that uh, you need for, for writing the papers, collaborating uh, with the other, uh, other researchers on the same paper. So uh, let me open one of, uh, one of the previous papers so you can see how it looks like. So um, LaTeX is, um, well, I wouldn't call it programming language, but it's a, a text uh, editor that translates, uh, that basically you can uh, enter uh, commands. It's more than text editor. So you can, uh, you, you can enter commands. It has its syntax similar to, for example, a concept like HTML. And this uh, uh, list of uh, commands or a source given here, it can be translated. Uh, uh, it can be translated to some um, more uh, viewer-friendly form, such as, for example, a PDF. So um, on the left, as I said, you can see uh, like the source code for this paper, and on the right, you can see how it. Uh, uh, how it looks like after compiling. So uh, it's very convenient. Uh, uh, you cannot read this paper. It's uh, uh, not human readable, I would say, or very hard for humans to read it. But this one, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it is readable. And uh, you can, uh, if you want to change, for example, some of the sections, you can uh, double click uh, on this place and it will take you uh, it will actually take you to a source uh, where this part is defined so for example this is a uh, this is the title of some subsection uh, section uh, section two and uh, here is uh, what is uh, uh, written inside of this so let's double click on some picture let's see how is uh, a figure defined so uh, this part of code, it actually adds the graphics. So here we can set the width, height of the graphic. We, we can uh, provide the name of the uh, the name of the file, which is uh, present here in the figure directory, also on the Overleaf platform. This is the name of the file. This is the caption. So when you uh, Below the figure, this is the text that uh, uh, that would uh, appear, and this is the label uh, which is used for referencing the figure. So if I actually search this, okay. So in the text, if I want to reference the figure, I can just say here figure ref. And uh, it will uh, actually add this uh, uh, reference to this figure. It will add the number. And I don't have to care about the numberings. And if I add new figure, it, uh, the, the numbers will be 
automatically uh, sorted by uh, by the order of the appearance in the uh, in the paper. Uh, this is also super useful for the references. Uh, this is one one of the best things, and it's only that uh, with only that it saves uh, huge amounts of, of time. So usually papers have dozens of uh, uh, of the references at the end, and uh, it is a, a practice that uh, when you uh, reference something, you need to add uh, you you need to add in the text the number of the reference. Uh, uh, for, from which it uh, relates, and uh, uh, Overleaf or LaTeX is uh, is taking care of it uh, for you. So uh, how references are handled? They are handled by adding all of the necessary references, all what you want to include in any order. You add just this bib text uh, of it uh, uh, to this file. And uh, includes uh, also some uh, uh, some label, and then uh, in the text, uh, when you want to uh, when you want to to reference it, you can just type uh, ref or site. You can just type site and the name or names of the references, and it will assign the numbers also by the order of the appearance. And uh, yeah, one more thing, uh, if you want to, to know how to find this bib text for some paper, here it is. So uh, if we have, for example, DOI, you can find it on Google Scholar. If there is a paper over there, uh, oh, it's smart to recognize uh, DOI, yes, and here you can, under site, you can find here bib text, and you just copy this bib text here in any place. So it doesn't matter. The order of the references is in this file. It's not significant. Uh, it they will be sorted uh, by the order of the appearance. And uh, look the, the, the in the text. Journal you want to use uh, is ordering by the way of the appearance or by the alphabetically or something like that. They okay, it is possible. Yeah. I never saw that anyone is using it uh, in any other way, but yeah, it's also, yeah, LaTeX is it's like a, a Swiss knife uh, for, for writing uh, papers, mm -hmm. it, it gives you full control, so you can uh, whatever you, you imagine that you can implement. Uh, Sometimes maybe it will take more, more time, but you can add to, to papers. And uh, at the end, uh, so uh, if you want to add this reference section, it's actually only one simple, simple command. Uh, I think this is, uh, yeah, bibliography. <laughs> so you just, you just add this command and uh, it uh, adds all the references which are sorted in a way you want. So uh, this is also just a short introduction to LaTeX and overlay just to show some of the capabilities and there are many tutorials on YouTube so if there is a, a need you can uh, you can review them. Any question uh, about these four topics? Thank you. Thank you for, for your attention. Hope it was uh, uh, it was useful. It was. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>